Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a guide to the bosses of the Waycrest Manor dungeon of BFA. The Waycrest Manor entrance is found here in Drustvar. There's five bosses, and the order that you do them in is flexible for the first three. The Heartsbane Triad is a trio of witches, and I like to think that they got to this age because they're such good friends. One boss at a time will have the Focusing Iris, that boss will need to be tanked, and only that boss will take meaningful damage, so hit that one. When she takes half of her health and damage, she drops the Iris and the next witch picks it up. With the Iris, the witch will build energy and cast Dire Ritual if allowed to reach 100%. Damage her down to drop the orb before she fills her energy, or if it's going to get off, use some big defensive cooldowns. Sister Selena is up first. She spams Soul Bolt, which you want to kick when she has the Iris. All three ladies have a kickable bolt spell that they spam. It does more damage when empowered by the Iris, so focus interrupts on just that boss. When empowered, Selena will use Soul Manipulation to mind control a player. Use your stuns and damage them down to break them out. Selena doesn't take damage while she's mind controlling anyway, so there's no reason not to help. On Heroic and Higher, when Selena has the Iris, the group will have to deal with her Aura of Apathy. All healing will be half as effective, so healers will feel like a limp noodle. You're just going to have to limp noodle your way through it. Sister Melody spams Ruinous Bolt, which you want to kick when it's her turn. When she's got the Iris, she casts Unstable Runic Mark. Everyone gets a debuff that does ticking damage over 6 seconds, and then a big explosion at the end. Spread out at least 6 yards from everyone before that expires. If you have curse removal and the group is already spread, you can start taking it off people early to help stagger out the explodes. On Heroic and Higher, when Melody has the Iris, there will be an Aura of Dread. That stacks up a dot on everyone, and you shake stacks off by moving. You can do a little wiggle to get it off, just don't wiggle into someone else if Runic Mark is about to pop. Sister Briar's got Bramble Bolt, and you know what to do there. When she has the Iris, she can cast Jagged Nettles, which is a dot that'll go out onto a random player. Heal the target above 90% health to remove the dot. On Heroic and Higher, when Sister Briar has the Iris, there's an Aura of Thorns. Smacking her will inflict damage back on the smacker. DPS should keep an eye on their health, and healers should keep an eye on the DPS that don't remember to keep eyes on stuff. I know a few. The Soulbound Goliath is this big wicker dude. He'll be stacking up a Soul Harvest buff throughout the fight, which makes him increasingly dangerous to tanks. To deal with that, we're going to burn it off. Lightning will strike and cause wildfire patches in the room. Those hurt players, and if the boss gets in them, he'll be afflicted with Burning Brush. That resets his Soul Harvest stacks and does moderate pulsing group damage. The tank should drag him in the fire to drop his stacks once he starts doing dangerous single target damage. 10 stacks is a good time to start thinking about it. Crush is a heavy hit on the tank, which gets scarier as Soul Harvest stacks up. Tanks should use mitigation, and maybe a cooldown if his stacks are high. Soul Thorns goes onto a random non-tank player and impales them, which stuns and inflicts damage over time. Turn and kill the roots to get your friends out, and the target might want some extra attention from the healer. On Heroic and Higher, when the boss gets Burning Brush, he'll also spawn Burning Souls. Those hit very hard, and there's no targeting or killing them. Just run away, they'll despawn after 10 seconds. Raw the Gluttonous is just a stunning dude. He has a chance to drop the Heartsbane Hexwurst cooking recipe just in case you're looking at him and you're like, man, why can't that be me? Raw doesn't move, and someone must be in melee to prevent him from spamming Consume All. He's a hungry boy. He'll cast Rotten Expulsion, where he faces a direction and then fires out a set of damage patches in that area. See where he's looking and move. Tenderize is a frontal cone aimed at the tank, which goes off three times in a row. Everyone, tank included, can dodge that. If the tank runs around like a chicken, though, it's going to be harder to get out of the second two, so fancy tanks will dodge in a tight little left-right-left -left pattern to cover less ground. Or right-left-right, -right, just as long as it's an alternating wiggle. After the tenderize, Wasting Servants will come out and head for the boss. If they make it there, he'll eat them to gain a damage buff, so CC and kill them first. It's probably a kinder fate. On Heroic and Higher, the Rotten Expulsion Pools will spawn Bile Oozlings. The tank should pick those up, and they explode when they die, so kill them one at a time. Lord and Lady Waycrest is the fourth encounter, and they've had more attractive days. You start off attacking Lord Waycrest, with Lady coming in towards the end. Lord Waycrest will cast Wasting Strike on the tank, who should try to have some mitigation up. He'll also put out Virulent Pathogen debuffs, which are probably what's going to white people. That's a disease that does damage over 5 seconds, and explodes in a poof of more Virulent Pathogen when it expires or is dispelled. If you get it, move out of the group. Priests and Paladins can help by dispelling it early, but whatever you do, don't take it off before people are clear. Lady Waycrest uses her abilities but isn't attackable early on. Racking Cords does random damage and can be kicked later on once she comes down. Discordant Cadenza spawns exploding zones around the room. Avoid those, preferably while watching out for plague explosions. When Lord Waycrest hits 30% health, Lady Waycrest heals him with Vitality Transfer. 
damage him down again, she'll heal him again, and then one more time before she ports in to fight you herself. By that point, she doesn't have much health left. After his first transfer, Lord Wakerest starts stacking up Putrid Vitality, which buffs him with increasing damage and haste. Finish him off first, and then deal with Lady Wakerest. On Heroic and Higher, the virulent pathogen explosions will leave behind contagious remains. Those stay on the ground for 4 seconds, then they explode for an additional AoE dose of virulent pathogen. Stay clear of those, especially while dodging the cadenza swirls. Gorak Tool is our final boss, and funnily enough, he's not actually the scariest part of his own fight. Every 20 seconds he summons a Death Touch Slaver ad, which is the real danger. DPS should swap to those and kill them. As soon as it dies, someone needs to walk over the alchemical fire bottle and then use their extra action button on the slaver corpse unless you want to fight that ad again later. You don't. While they're up, the slavers will dark leap onto the furthest target from them and apply a dot within a 5 yard area. A range should run out to take that so it doesn't go off in melee. Gorak himself will cast Darken Lightning, which is interruptible. Kick that. At 100% energy, Gorak casts Dread Essence. That deals big group damage and fully heals any adds. It will also res the dead slavers unless you got the bodies with the alchemical fire. Of course, you already did that. Good job. I always believed in you. On Heroic and Higher, the adds also get Death Lens, which lasers somebody down for 70% of their health. That can't be kicked, but the ad can be stunned or CC'd. If nobody has anything, then that player is going to need some big heals. So that should get you through Waycrest Manor. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think, leave a like for me if this helped you out, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!